Welcome to Decker Tech. I'm Aaron Decker, and today we're going to go the guide for Sylvie. Sylvie, aka the female Legolas. She is all about archer, ranged attacks, sharp, pierce, uh, very powerful DPS. We're going to be talking about her in the role as a damage dealer. Uh, I don't really know of any roles she has other than that. She's not really a, a support, a battery, or a tank in any way, shape, or form. So uh, she's just here to uh, kill monsters. And hopefully she has a team around her that can help her do that. Uh, I would like to thank everyone for helping me uh, out with the subscriptions. That will help make these videos more possible in the future. I also, uh, like I said, do really well with praise. So keep those those comments coming. All, any feedback you have will help shape these videos. There's still about another 13 or so to go. So any uh, criticisms or things you liked or disliked, please let me know. You know, the, the more the better and I can keep uh, making these. But uh, let's start with uh, Sylvie's talents. So the, the big key thing here, the kind of game changer effect she has, is Sight will now also reduce piercing resistance. So if you've got Sylvie on the team, ideally all of your damage dealers are going to be trying to lean into this, uh, either the Sight or the damage. Like they're either going to try, try to amp piercing damage in some way, or they're going to be dealing piercing damage. So we'll talk about that later in team comps. But the idea is now we have an extra way to amplify our damage and that's with sight uh level two we've got uh two very viable options here first one reduces resistances on the target even more it lasts seven uses i think that's seven hits not uh that's gonna be seven hits which you may or may not do in a turn uh use this if you are the only damage dealer and the enemies are not getting down to you know negative 95 percent resist or you know at least below zero which uh, is very possible and very doable. Uh, it is fairly consistent on bringing down heavy targets, but, I mean, depending on your play style and what difficulty you're at, I'll also go Elven Agility. This is the one I've been going recently just because it helps with deck consistency. One of the big issues here is that uh, target shooting costs zero and Elven Agility costs one. Elven Agility also doesn't do anything on its own. It's a setup card for your next two ranged attacks. And we'll get into the kind of the, the cycle and the momentum of how you do your your cards uh, for her, but this kind of fits in with that same theme of you do a lot of prep and then you do one big attack and this kind of leans into that and I'll show you how to use this. Either one's very viable. Uh, I think the top scorers are, are leaning a little towards sharp shooting and me I'm leaning more towards Elven Agility because I like uh, deck consistency. I like to know what I'm going to draw. Uh, level three, uh, I'm going to say accurate shots is I don't see a use for it. Uh, this does make it so that you can do some sort of weird bleed shenanigans. Uh, on hit, applying sight uh, isn't really important to you because, yes, you're going to do multiple hits, but two sight or even ten sight if you have lots of perks is only like 3% more damage. And you have other ways to increase your damage faster on hit or with attacks. So we're not really interested in the sight or any of the on hit effects here. So we'd rather just go with range mastery because range mastery is going to give us more energy. Any, any range shots that start in our hand will cost less. And that is important that it has to start in the hand. And I'll get more into that in detail later. Hawkeye goes along with that bleed idea that we're not going to do. Just, I mean, yes, plus two sight charges is okay, but ideally your team should be helping you do the sight. And by the time your turn comes around, sight's not as important as, as other things like dealing damage which double shot hey look this does damage <laughs> this will uh, basically copy your next uh, ranged attack copy it and oh by the way you'll gain six sharp it's it's phenomenal it's very powerful this is a very much a build around and this this again leans into the idea that we're going to do a lot of prep and do one massive shot and then uh, kind of clean up afterwards level fives are both kind of meh in my opinion perforating shots this is uh if you're not playing with restricted power or you're playing really long fights, this will add up very fast. But if you are playing with restricted power, this this basically does nothing, uh, give or take. And then Eternal Bond, this one's pretty cool. This makes it so your pet doesn't die. And uh, we'll, uh, let's just go look at that right now because Sylvie starts with a pet, Harley. So depending on the version, more resistance is more damage. Uh, it applies Pierce. It always hits the back monster and it applies a little bit of sight to them. So this will help bring down evasion on the back target or some buffer or stuff like that. Really, the evasion is the thing you care about. Also applies a little sight and makes them die. And it, it is just a normal attack. This is modified by all of your sharp, all of your buffs, and uh, this can be a pretty hefty hit. 
Uh, yeah, so let's get into her starting deck. Start with her, not them. So, as I said, ranged attacks is the thing we're dealing with here. Uh, and sure, there's a lot of them, but uh, not many of them are very viable. And all the ones that are viable are already in your deck. So, you'll see the things I've changed. Ice shots are gone. Those are way too expensive for so little effect. And the real powerhouse cards that you start with, and you start with two of each, is Multi-Shot and Rapid Fire. These are the cards we're going to try to build around. Because Multi-Shot, if there's four enemies, is two energy for four attacks, basically. And Rapid Fire is three energy for three attacks, but you don't have to have, you know, multiple targets. And depending on the situation, whether you're in a boss fight or a, a regular fight, regular fights, you're going to want these Multi-Shots, and boss fights, you're going to want the Rapid Fires. So we have two Multi-Hit attacks that um we can we're going to be leaning on and with multi-hit attacks the best way to amp them up is static buffs or or power multiplication part part of me breathing is difficult the uh sharp the way it works is it basically just has plus one damage but if you do three attacks then that's plus three damage um and that starts to add up very fast you'll you'll be super surprised at how quickly this can be multiplied. Not to mention, these are three attacks on one card. And another mechanic that we haven't talked about yet is Stealth. Now, if you read the fine print here in Stealth, Stealth says, hey, your next attack does 20% bonus damage per charge. Well, it turns out that that affects the entire card, not just one of the attacks on the card. So if you camouflage, you get some Stealth, and then you Rapid Fire or you Multi-Shot, the entire attack, all of the hits, are going to be affected by that stealth. So it can get pretty extreme, and we're just we're just leaning into that. We're going to set up a one big shot, launch it, and call it a day, which is why I've crafted Volley. So Volley is just an upgraded multi-shot. Uh, it says twice, like, first rule of government spending. Why buy one when you can buy two for twice as much? Except for in the case of Sylvie, this works out really well. So... Instead of just hitting all monsters once for two, we're hitting all monsters once for three. I mean, sorry, for four. Um, and what that does for us is then we can multiply it by the stealth. Or we can copy it with our, our doubling shot. Or etc. cetera, et cetera. So we're really leaning into this, this bottom row. And so in the starting deck, you start with all four of these. Two multi-shots, two rapid fires. And this is kind of the play pattern you're, you're playing into. So you want to be able to consistently get to these cards... And you want everything else in your deck to sonic support that. So you're going to upgrade the quick shots to zero cost so that you're not wasting energy on them. Uh, you're going to bring in some zero cost items, cards like Chant of Accuracy. Uh, Sharp is good. Eventually you might cut this, but for now it's just a quick zero cost card that's not going to soak up any of your energy. And it helps make that one shot stronger. As you can tell, everything is just leaning into we want one big shot per turn. Or in the case of a once we get double shot, it's the same shot twice. You know what I mean? It's it's pretty cool. Uh, I added another camouflage. You don't have to. Eventually, you're going to end the game with two. But in the early game, since your deck doesn't have as much consistency, uh, since you don't have any boons, uh, some of the cards you haven't crafted yet, you don't have people drawing you extra cards, uh, I like to have three copies of camouflage so that on any given turn, when you draw a card, when you draw your, your shots, you have a camouflage to go with it. Because, I mean... A single multi-shot's nice, but a camouflage plus multi-shot is so much better. And I'm also running three of the AoE attacks so that I have a higher chance of drawing them turn one. And then as the, the fight progresses, I'll move into the rapid fires. It's really hard to, to play the volley early on because of energy restrictions. Um, so you might have the opportunity to either do a camouflage multi-shot or just do a volley. Uh, for the most part, it's... Because of the sharp on camouflage, you might... I haven't actually done the math now that I think about it, but camouflage multi-shot will surprise you how strong it is. If you if if like if you go from zero sharp to the camouflage sharp, multi-shot will probably do better. But if you have anything else going on, then just firing off a volley will probably be more damage. Just because it's, you know, twice the amount of attacks, yo. And even though camouflage is a damage increase, it's only 20% per charge, which is only going to be... 40 or 60 percent depending on your perks uh, i think the last card we haven't talked about here is our starting card and setup so two cards falcon shot um i don't really like it it's it's 
it gives you an idea of what we should be doing. Ranged attacks, sharp, piercing. That's that's all stuff we want to do. Uh, by the time, like I said, by the time our turn comes around, the X site doesn't really matter. This card is fairly good once you hit the level three perk and it costs zero. But the play pattern of Sylvie, sometimes you're going to draw this card instead of having it start in your hand. And in that case, I don't want to spend one energy for a shot. It's not my powerful one. Like, so any energy I spend outside of camouflage and my super attack is is almost wasted. Like, it's, it's a waste of energy. So Falcon Shot ends up, like, on a good day, it's great. On a bad day, it's bad. So I normally just cut it for consistency's sake, but do with it as you will. Early on, it's... It's very, it's very acceptable. I mean, just because it's a way to gain sharp. Uh, setup. So, as I said, on any given turn, we want to draw our, our powerful shot and, and go with it. So, if on a turn you draw your multi-shot, but you're trying to single target down a... Tar uh, a mo I need to slow down here. You're trying to single target down a boss. You're like, man, I really don't want this multi-shot. Well, setup, what a nice thing about it is not only does it replace itself, it's kind of a cantrip, so it makes your deck basically one card smaller what it does is if you have these cards you don't plan on using on your turn like multi shots when you want rapid fires you can dig deep in find the card you want and then put back the card you didn't want for a future turn and you're like you're basically I'm, i get to replace setup and multi shot to dig deeper does that make any sense so on turns on the first turn when i want multi shots and i draw my rapid fires i'll just use setup to ditch the rapid fires so you'll set up, it'll draw you a bunch of cards, you'll put two back, and you'll just put the rapid fires back. Which is really great, because on the next turn, you're likely to want the rapid fire for a single target hit. So, I think setup is a fantastic card for Sylvie. One downside for it is the level 3 talent, which we'll get into later. But, it far the benefits far outweigh the negatives of it. Uh, I think that's it for the cards. Uh, so, I, I mean, you may notice I upgraded all these, and I spent a decent amount of shards here. But you'll have more or less shards depending on your difficulty and your perks and, and, and all that. And I can't really tailor these to a specific number unless I'm doing M16 guides again, which I'm not. These are generic guides to help you play Sylvie. Uh, if you have more um, if you have more shards than what I, I've used here, just look at the Act 2 deck and, and, and adjust there. Otherwise, if you have less, kind of pick and choose your upgrades. I'd say the quick shot upgrades are more important than anything else. Buying the setup and camouflage are kind of splurging. Chant of accuracy is very important, and upgrading these is not as important as as just getting some of this other stuff done. All right, let's look at perks. That'll give you a good idea of how to set her up for success. So, as our main damage dealer, the world revolves around her. Uh, we want all of our teammates to make sure that they are getting all the perks that we need because sometimes we need a lot of them. Um, you're going to want as much energy as possible for those very strong, uh, heavy costing arrow attacks. Speed is variable based on your team. You're already fa fairly fast, so you can actually ditch a lot of these um, depending on the turn order your team wants. Uh, that's a whole other topic we don't need to get into. Stealth. Stealth charges. Yes, please, because that means our... Our camouflage shots do more damage. And then on stealth, we want the stealth does more percentages. So when I said that 40-60%, I apologize. It's 75% if you've got both these perks. Because that one cam camouflage will have the extra charge and do 25% more damage per charge. Uh, sight. Uh, sight's nice. I only pick up the, the one point on her most of the time. Just because even though I sometimes apply sight... Other people on my team are applying more of it than me. If you are the only one applying Sight, consider getting this second one for three. But since I was relying on Nesglick here, you can see I had Nesglick. I was trying to do a, a kind of combo turn one kind of stuff. So Sight was disappearing after the first turn, but I was getting so much more of it on turn one than I normally would because Nesglick was doing plus three charges. So I was trying to just kill things on turn one. Uh, Ideally, just try to convince anyone on your team, like the Nesglex of the world or any other scouts, that, hey, get some of these extra sight charges, and you apply a lot of sight, and then I will benefit from it. The biggest damage multipliers for her are going to be this sharp one right here. So sharp char charges is a given. But right here, this one says, sharp on you, 
uh, increases piercing by one and a half instead of one. But you no longer benefit from slashing. That's okay. We're not using any slashing damage. Uh, that only applies to like if we play out a fan of knives or something, which is okay, but it's not something we're going to do. All of our attacks are going to be piercing damage. All of them are affected by this version of sharp. This is 100% the best way to increase your damage. Because you will always have sharp because you're making it yourself. Another damage multiplier that you may not always have is bless. Depending on your teammates, if they're giving you any sort of bless, I highly recommend this perk. Um, bless uh, increases by 1.5 instead of 1. You don't get extra healing though, so it is a little like, hey, I'm going to soak up more heals, sorry, but I'm going to do a lot more damage. So this is a big pickup. It works exactly like the sharp one, uh, except for it's only real usable if your team is applying bless to you which Nezglex can do. Go figure. Uh, let's see. Vulnerable. There's a really cool vulnerable perk here that is specific to the Sylvies of the world. Uh, vulnerable on enemies only reduces slashing, piercing, and blunt. So this is where I said that if Sylvie's on your team, odds are you want your team to focus only on piercing damage. Uh, because if you pick up this, anyone on your team picks up this talent, and you'll, you'll ask them to because you don't want to spend the perks for it, uh, you will no longer be reducing their fire resistances or their shadow resistances with the vulnerable debuff. Uh, it's only a 3% increase, so if you have any sort of mixed damage on your team, please do not pick this up. But if Sylvie's your main DPS, which she should be, uh, I would rec highly recommend this. It's a very big damage increase. Pair that again with the 12 charges, and whoever's applying vulnerable on your team is also plus one charge. So three people on your team should be picking up one of these vulnerable perks and uh, use them accordingly. Well, let's see, what do we got? Piercing damage for sure. Powerful. So the best powerful perk in most cases is going to be extra charges and charges decay slower. This basically says I am more powerful. Yay. Uh, it's just an extra 10% increased damage overall, give or take. Uh, there are some interesting use cases for this one. If you can get max powerful every turn, or you're trying to do the one turn combo, then this can be... <laughs> I didn't do it in my last run, and I kind of wish I had, because I every fight was only one turn long, and I could have been doing, you know... What's this? Not twice the damage because of the way math turns out, but like another third, third of the damage. Like, it would have been insane. It's ridiculous. Uh, let's see, I think that's everything we got perks-wise. Obviously, I, I didn't get any survival stuff because I was screwing around and trying to do one-turn combos. I eventually did die to Archon Rin on Madness 14 because all of my decks vanished down to zero cards. It was it was fun. I was just trying to see if I could one-turn or two-turn combo the boss, and I, I could not because I made a couple mistakes. And or just Archon Rin has ridiculous amounts of health. Uh, I think I did save my pets, though. Anyway... Uh, that's everything for perks. Let's move on to Act 2. Now is a good time that if you have any questions, please let me know what they are, and uh, I will address them in the comments. And or, you know, if I didn't address it in this video, I'll, I'll adjust future videos for it. So, Act 2 deck. Oh, clicking on the wrong thing. Magic Forge. Sylvie. Yep. Have to talk to myself to figure this out. Alright, so deck is a little more consistent here. I brought down... One of the multi shots because I, I have another setup and I have adrenaline. Like, I have more cards to fill in so I can start trimming down to the idea is you want to do plan on two shots in a turn. Until you have double shot, you're going to pay full price for them and you're going to use camouflages. Uh, and then later on, once you have the double shot, you might do two or three shots and camouflage at least two of them. So, I'm, I'm down to two camouflages, I'm down to two AoE attacks. If you have another volley, great. I would say two volleys is better than a multi shot volley. The idea is you only need to play one of them most of the time. And then I still have two rapid fires. Uh, I'll talk about in the final deck what you could do run instead rapid fire, but rapid fire will do you really well against bosses uh, this far along. Like this, you could keep this the whole game and just this will be your single target damage for the rest of the game and you'll be okay with that. There's there's not much else because we want repeat. Oh, I can spell, not repeat. Repeat ranged. So... These are all the repeat ranged attacks. Most of them we'll start dealing with in Act 4, and I'll talk about Poison Spray and Rain of Arrows there. 
But as you can see, rapid fire is only one of four, and we're already running. <laughs> we're already running two out of the four, so it's you're gonna keep it for most of the game. Uh, the adrenaline this pairs really well with the elven agility, and or just deck consistency. If you're not consistently drawing your volley on first turn or the turn that you need it, shy away from things like adrenaline because these will eat up uh, your cards that you draw on a turn. Adrenalines and quick shots eat up cards. But uh, it can, um, if your deck's consistent enough or you know you're hitting your, the cards you need, then they're great fillers for those extra card slots because you don't want to spend energy on anything else. And the more energy you have, the more likely you can do a, a volley followed by a rapid fire or a volley followed by a multi shot kind of thing. Uh, not much changes here on the deck. Um, I wouldn't get more than like two or three setups. I think I ended up with three in the last one, and that was kind of pushing the limits. Uh, they're not a bad card in any means. It's just they're time consuming and uh, you only really need two to make a consistent enough deck for Sylvie's purposes. Uh, I would not recommend. So we're talking about deck consistency here. I do not recommend Deflex, and that is because of her talent here. So talents, talents, talents. Range mastery stuff starting in your hand. Range attacks in your hand cost one less. But if you happen to start with a deflect in your hand, then you draw that ranged attack that could have been in your hand. You now cost yourself one energy. So I'm willing to spend that risk on the setup because it can put back the, the shots I'm not using that turn. But deflect, you definitely, you definitely don't want just random cantrips in your deck. You don't want cards that don't instantly replace themselves. Like, boons replace themselves before that talent triggers. You don't want any of these... Uh, you don't want any of these cantrips that don't replace themselves immediately, like that replace themselves in your hand. Like that's why we cut vigilance. So even though it kind of replaces itself, even if I had a corrupted vigilance that was perp that was zero cost, I think there's zero cost. I'm not sure. Uh, even if I had a zero cost vigilance, I wouldn't play it because it's costing me an energy to have it in my hand because that rapid fire, that volley didn't get its cost reduced. All right, enough of that. Let's go to items. So, uh, whoops, that's. As you can see, this is one of the powerful items. We'll get to that in a second. But uh, keywords we're looking for. Sharp. Uh, hey, look. There it is again. Anything that increases our sharp charges is fantastic. You can uh, find a couple of these at events. Tiki Hut is the... I think that's the fight in the green biome. If you take on both of them. Or, or if you just win either fight. Brass Amulet, Sharp Chargers, and I think the best one that everyone loves here is Assassin Tools. The nice thing about Assassin Tools is we're going to keep that camouflage for the entire game. And it says, you know, add two or three uh, Stealth Charges. Well, when you look at that, every time you add Stealth, you get Sharp. And this says plus one Sharp, but if you have anything that adds plus to your Sharp, like that perk that we got, that plus one, this is actually two Sharp. Or if you have an item, it's, you know, three or four sharp. So this can power on really fast. And that's three or four sharp per stealth charge. So if you have stealth charges, it gets a little out of control. You can kind of maybe see how that, that, that can escalate quickly. Otherwise, uh, Elven Quiver for my play style is a little slow. And I'd rather have lockpicks just because I'd rather my turn one be powerful because that's when I'm doing my big AOE attack. Uh, but I mean... It is what it is. Let's talk about bows. So, range draw. So, one thing we didn't talk about is quick shots. You can fill your hand, your deck with a little more quick shots if you have one of these bows that allow you to draw cards. So, that turns... These say, when you play a ranged attack, either the first time, two times, three times, etc. Uh, you can draw a card. So that turns all of your quick shots into cantrips. Yes, it runs into that same problem of I didn't draw the expensive one on my opening hand, so I spent an energy. But overall, that makes this it's it's very powerful to have this effect. Um, Tempest is one you can guarantee pick up. Well, I say guarantee. If you have the right uh, Act One event, you can. There is an event in Act One. I believe it's mm, Farmer's Caravan or Northern Fields event that you can get a sack of grain. Actually, there might be two ways to get grain. You can get it at the granary or the, the the event. But if you have grain, you can go to the uh, fire biome 
top top path in the back there's a harpy matriarch in the nest it, it looks like the symbol right here that they're showing on tempest and you can feed them the the grain and you'll get the the bow and that's that's guaranteed every time you do that series of events so this the nice thing about this bow is it can trips your your quick shots and it's gaining sharp and again if you have anything that increases sharp charges you're gaining sharp very fast and so that might change your play pattern a little from what i would like i'm discussing so far in that event what you do is you play your quick shots first you get your sharp stack as high as possible and then you camouflage and then you do your big attack so it's uh it's nice to have these to just do a couple quick shots to get your your charges up on stuff and then you do your combo which we'll get into the combo here when we look at the next thing what else what else do we need items wise this is really all it is is the bows and sharp and stealth maybe we didn't talk about stealth are there any good stealth items plus stealth charges yes please yes please yes please all these are well you don't want the combat start because you're going to do some setup cards first and the stealth is going to be wasted but the plus charges on the the hood and the veil are are fairly good again combat start doesn't do anything and the <laughs> the the purple tools is best tools these are very good for you yes I, I think that's all I want to talk about for items. Let's go to the final deck. So, with this one, oh, I always click on that different. Uh, I found another adrenaline. Whoops. Let's go ranged. Uh, what did I say? Range, repeat. So, I have more than 16 cards here because I wanted to leave it open for discussion here. So we can now play around double shot. So as long as we can draw double shot and the card we want with a consistent enough deck, then we only need one copy of it. Uh, it's still safer to run two if you don't have a consistent deck, but you can you can start coming down to just one of. And Reign of Arrows is the best AOE one. This says pew 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 six energy, which is a lot, yes, for triple attacks on everyone. But since we're trying to do this all in effect and we now have double shot we can now uh cast elven agility or the the markmanship one that we have play double shot play camouflage play rain of arrows and suddenly we have a very buffed rain of arrows that we can then camouflage and then we we have a very strong rain of arrows attack we have now have a copy of it in our hand that we can now camouflage again and cast the copy so you're casting the strongest card in the game twice with huge damage amplification uh if you haven't seen my video yet just just take a quick look i have like a 10 second clip and like a two minute clip showing you the ridiculousness that you can do turn one with sylvia i mean i was on madness four and i was clearing things on turn one it was it was it was stupid strong but then the problem you run into is archon rin so what you got to do with archon is find a way to do several attacks on him for cheaper and that's where poison spray comes in so Poison Spray is a two energy, three attacks, which is much better than our Rapid Fire because it costs that one less energy. And if you start with it in your hand, it comes down to one. So this is super fantastic. So if you're struggling to kill the Archon or you know you're going to have troubles with it, stock up on Poison Sprays because this will be the card that you spam forever and ever to try to kill the Archon of Annoyingness. Um, yeah. Did we talk about everything here? Adrenaline's because my deck is super trim and thin, and I want to cast a Rain of Arrows followed by one of these other things. And just the ability... Trying to cast Rain of Arrows, two Camouflages, and an Elven Agility is super hard and expensive. That's what, seven, eight, nine energy. So I've got a Boon that gives me energy, and I've got two Adrenaline's, and I'm still... Eh, it's still rough. So what you can do to alleviate that is instead of running the Elven Agility, either cut it at this point, or instead run the uh the target shooting talent which you can't go back and change it but you, you, you get a feel of whether or not you're going to have a, an elven agility game or a target shooting game after you play a couple times uh yeah let me look at this deck one more time and i think we are done let me double check my notes uh team comps we got to talk about team comps so who works well with sylvie so to do this i gotta go obelisk mode so heroes that go well with Sylvie. Well, anyone that does Sight, which are all the scouts, uh, Gustav is easily the best one for her. The reason that Gustav's so good is because Gustav's starting deck has two chance of accuracy, and then you can craft a third one 
So, and since Gustav goes faster, I think he goes faster than her. 20, yeah. Well, this is weird. This interface is messed up because of perks, but I'm pretty sure Gustav base speed is faster than Sylvie's. So he'll go before her. He'll do a couple, sing a couple sharp songs at her. You know, some, anyway, I'm not, I'm not going to, you, you'll apply these chances of accuracy before her turn and she'll have a bunch of sharp for her turn. Uh, she also goes well with anyone that applies sight, which is again, the scouts or uh, Nez, where's Nez? Nez down here. Because Nez has this built-in stuff about sights where every turn he applies sight and he gets the resourceful thing where every time he plays a skill, he gets sight. The issue with running Nez is that he goes slower than Sylvie. So you either want to speed him up or rely on a turn two, turn three clear or, or big attack. So one of the best strategies are if you're going to run one of these healers to buff Sylvie, you'll use Gustav as well. You'll use Gustav's, uh, you'll give him a chant of initiative to, uh, to speed them up. And the problem with that in general, let me show you a quick little issue you might run into. So with Gustav, oh, wrong spot here. Um, fast. He starts with songs of songs of quickness, and the nice thing about this is, yes, it's an AOE dispel, AOE speed up. But if you're trying to get Nesglick to go before Sylvie, you got to make sure that you're not speeding up Sylvie too. So, <laughs> on my Gustav deck, I I cut the the song of quickness, and instead I had to put in the um the chance of initiatives and I eventually cut down to one. Anyway, don't don't worry about his deck. That's not the point. The point is use the chant of initiative to speed up the Nesglick to then go before Sylvie, who can then now buff Sylvie. You'll also have to do this with your mages if you're running a mage. Uh, because Sylvie's just her base speed, I think I removed all her speed talents and she's at 19 or some crap like that. Let's see, let's see, let's check her her perks here. So she I I don't know why I'm running all three speed talents. Silly me. Uh <laughs> But, I mean, she's going at 18. So her base is 15, which is stronger than any of the healers or the uh, the mages. Uh, yeah, team comp. Uh, Bree's nice just because there's someone that does powerful and Bree can has some synergy with skills. Magnus is safer and easier to play. Uh, any of the reason that Magnus and Bree are both good, though, is because they apply vulnerable very well. And they can also slow down the enemies so that Sylvie can guarantee go before all the bad guys. Uh because there are some monsters that are going to be faster than Sylvie, even the, the fastest version of her that I had here, I still had to sometimes slow down the enemy. So between Gustav and Bree, I was applying slows to the enemy, either as an AoE or a single target, to get them slower than her. Uh, yeah, I think that's all I got. Let's go check those team comps one more time, and uh, I think we're done. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm trying to keep these brief, but uh, I just got to I just gotta talk until I, I feel like I'm done talking. That's, that's how these go. Uh, Bree or Magnus go really well because of Vulnerable. Uh, Gustav is just basically these two pair together all the time. Any of the scouts can can do fun things with Sylvie, uh, either as a secondary damage dealer that also is going to go a Pierce build, or a um, some sort of buff for her, like Sharp and stuff. Any of the mages can just funnel energy to her because you saw we had a lot of expensive cards. They can funnel energy and inspire to her. None of their damages really pair with her, especially since Sylvie is going to be getting that vulnerable talent that basically says vulnerable only applies to physical damage. So Sylvie likes all the people here, these top eight people really well. Uh, except for maybe Heiner, because Heiner's super slow. Like th These all can go along with her fairly well. Rookley maybe not so much just because he's more slashing damage than piercing, but at least that vulnerable issue doesn't, like, he's not hurt by the vulnerable issue. So even though he's not effect helped by Sylvie's sight uh, resistance change, he's still not hurt by the vulnerable thing. And then, of course, anyone down here is just to, to feed resources to Sylvie. And that's it. Uh, if you like this video, please let me know what you liked about it. And uh, I will try to get as rest of these out as possible. I have a a whole laundry list of things I'm trying to do for Across the Obelisk, and I will I will do my best to get those to you as soon as possible.